Hello and welcome to Geothermal University. I'm Jeff Johnson. Today we're going to discuss subcooling and superheat. If a TXV has failed, subcooling and superheat will be incorrect. We'll need a few tools. A set of refrigerant gauges, a thermal couple type thermometer, and a pressure temperature chart. Now let's get started. Here is where we measure subcooling. To calculate subcooling, you measure the liquid line temperature just before the TXV. A TXV must have a steady stream of liquid refrigerant to feed into the evaporator. As a general rule, the liquid refrigerant delivered to the TXV must be subcooled 6 to 12 degrees below the saturation temperature. Pocket type immersion thermometers do not work in this application. We will measure how many degrees of subcooled refrigerant is being sent to the TXV and compare it to the manufacturer's specifications if they are available. Remember, the TXV must see all liquid. Good contact to the liquid line is critical. Make sure you have good thermocouple probe and good contact and insulated to the liquid line. Use an insulator if possible. Now look at your high side gauge pressure. Convert the high side pressure to temperature from the gauge or using a pressure temperature chart. Now subtract the measured liquid line temperature. This is degrees of subcooling. In this case, 338 PSI equals 104 degrees. 104 degrees minus 93 degree liquid line temperature equals 11 degrees of subcooling. In this instance, the TXV has adequate subcooling. Remember, the TXV must have adequate subcooling specified by the manufacturer. TXVs must receive a steady stream of liquid. Another important measurement critical to refrigeration is superheat. Superheat is the degrees above saturation point added to the refrigerant. A compressor must always have superheated vapor entering the valves. We must measure superheat at the TXV sensing bulb. On some models or split systems, superheat will probably be measured closer to the compressor. In general, superheat should range from 8 to 15 degrees. Calculating superheat produced by the TXV is very similar to measuring subcooling, except we use our low side gauge. Take your low side gauge pressure measurement, Convert your gauge pressure to temperature using the temperature on the gauge or the pressure temperature chart. This is the saturation temperature. Superheat is the degrees above saturation temperature. Now we need to measure the skin temperature of the suction line where the TXV sensing bulb is attached. Attach your thermocouple probe near the sensing bulb. You will need to firmly attach your thermocouple on the suction line very close to the TXV sensing bulb. To make sure you get an accurate reading, you want to insulate the thermocouple in contact with the suction line. Take this measurement and deduct your saturation temperature. Let's calculate our superheat. 110 PSI equals 36 degrees saturation temperature. Measured suction line temperature is 48 degrees. 48 degrees suction line temperature minus the 36 degrees saturation temperature equals 12 degrees of superheat. TXVs are designed to produce 8 to 15 degrees superheat. This unit is operating within manufacturer's specifications. Testing a TXV measuring subcooling and superheat are standard procedures used every day. Improper diagnosis of a TXV is very common. By using these testing procedures in this video, your diagnosis will be confirmed. Should replacing a TXV be necessary, the new valve must be protected from overheating by using a heat sink or a paste. Thank you for watching TXV Troubleshooting.